uh, consider the following Diophantine equation and let's try to solve this. Uh, from, uh, from the way it looks, this uh, looks very similar to um, Fermat's last theorem. However, uh, obviously in Fermat's last theorem, the exponents were all equal and this is not the case. So therefore, um, yeah, there must be a solution. And obviously one of the solutions clearly is uh, the Pythagorean uh, triple uh, 3 4 5 3 square plus 4 square equals 5 square would work but we would be curious to find out if there's any other solutions to this equation and common sense or intuition tells us that that's probably not gonna work so uh, so we uh, our, our intuition tells us that uh, uh, that x equals y equals z equals 2 might be the only uh, solution, unique solution. Anyhow, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, start with this problem. So um, this is a very well-known problem and uh, and this problem I found it on, on uh, what Stack Exchange uh, website. Um, so and I'll just follow uh, along the, the lines, uh, along the proof provided in that website. So what we do is we take uh, this equation modulo 3 so if I take it in mod uh, 3, uh, so this term will vanish. So this term would be 1 to the power y, which is just uh, congruent to 1. And on the right hand side, we have 2 to the power z. But instead, what I can do is I can write it as minus 1 to the power z. So minus 1 to the power z would be congruent to 1. The implication is that z is uh, even, or if you will, uh, let's make this new uh, parameterization to z1. In a similar way, if we investigate this given Diophantine equation modulo 4, uh, so the first term becomes minus 1 to the power x, because 3 is minus 1 in mod 4. Uh, the second term totally drops, and uh, the right-hand side becomes 1 to the power z. Um, so therefore... Oh, actually, let's do it uh, over here. So 1 to the power z is 1. So therefore, minus 1 to an even power would only give us 1. So suggesting again that x itself uh, is even as well. So therefore, x is actually 2x1, something like that, where x1 and z1 are uh, positive integers as well. So z1 is a positive integer and x1 is also a positive integer. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and substitute these you know, into our uh, expression. So we would get, and at that point, uh, I want to speculate on how can we can proceed further. So therefore, uh, if we call our original equation as star, so star is equivalent uh, to uh, 3 to the power uh, 2x1 plus... Uh, well, while we are at it, I can write 4 to the y as 2 to the 2y, and that's equal to 5 to the 2z1. And this further implies, I, I can rewrite this as 3 to the x1 square plus 2 to the y uh, square equals 5 to the z1 square. Awesome. Now we would like to solve this uh, for x1, y, z1 in positive integers. Let's write that down. x1, y, uh, z1, positive uh, integers. And at that step, uh, we just realized that uh, the uh, numbers 3 to the x1, 2 to the y, and 5 to the z1, they are all uh, relatively prime. So, um, and as a result, uh, this reminds us of the... Uh, um, of the uh, characterization of uh, primitive Pythagorean triples. Uh, so therefore, I would like to uh, have a, um, suggest the following theorem. So this is a very well-known theorem. And the theorem states the following. Okay, let's keep the red color actually. So this is different than our problem at hand. So this is a side note. So we will apply this theorem in solving and this uh, Diophantine equation, basically. Okay, so what is the theorem? The, so the theorem says that if you have three numbers, A, B, C, uh, they are positive integers, they are positive integers, uh, with no common factor, so let's write that down, with no common uh, factor, and for a very good reason, because obviously uh, you can scale it up or down uh, by multiplying by a number uh, with no common factor, uh, such that uh, a, b, and c, they satisfy the following equation. a square plus b square is equal to c square. Uh, and uh, a and b are relatively prime. Okay, so um, 
if that's the case, then then we have this amazing result. Uh, then, okay, so here is the conclusion. Then, uh, A and B, first of all, uh, they well, obviously they are uh, they, they 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 are relatively prime uh, by the hypothesis, but A and B have uh, opposite parity. Uh, so that's that's important. This is a consequence, and uh, because they have opposite parity, we can say that uh, A is uh, odd and B is even. Oops, that's right, even properly, even. And um, with this, now uh, we can claim that there there exist numbers u and v, positive integers. Uh, which satisfy the following uh, properties. Well, U and V, they are relatively prime. U and V, they are relatively prime. They also have uh, opposite parity. Opposite parity. Parity. And uh, U and uh, U is greater than V. Okay, those three conditions. U and V, so you can always find uh, two positive integers, U and V, such that they are relatively prime, they have opposite parity, and U is greater than V, such that they satisfy this amazing result. They parameterize. So A is equal to, we can parameterize A, B, and C in the following way. And C is equal to U squared minus V squared. That's it. That's a huge theorem. Um, so as a result of this, uh, we would call these triples A, B, C as uh, primitive uh, Pythagorean triples. Uh, primitive in the sense that A and B are relatively prime. As I as you can see here in this equation, we can obviously uh, scale A, B, C by the same um, factor, uh, K, for instance, because uh, the equation itself is uh, homogeneous of the second degree. But because of this result, and let's have a look at our equation. Obviously, 3 to the power x1, 2 to the power y, they are relatively prime. So therefore, they satisfy this condition. They obviously cannot have any uh, common factor. So therefore, that we can apply this theorem, right? So the, 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 we can always find uh, uv uh, such that uh, we can express 3 to the x1 in terms of... Uh, uh, and um, so all these three numbers uh, on this, obviously 2 to the y is the even one. So uh, so uh, one of them had to be even. So therefore, this guy is our A from our theorem and this guy is the B. So therefore, now let's apply this theorem. So um, let me go ahead and, well, uh, we can put it on the side so I can still see partially the theorem. Um, so therefore, we have, so we can assume that 3 to the x1 uh, is which is our a here so by the theorem it says uh, u square plus v square right so we can find u and v such that huh? so this is u square plus uh, v square and then 2 to the y uh, that's the even one so 2 times u times v and finally 5 to the uh, z1 uh, is equal to uh, u square minus v square where u and v satisfy these uh, conditions obviously so now let's uh, speculate on what uh, what can u and v be obviously because u and v are relatively prime and look at that 2 times u times v from the second equation is equal to 2 to the power y suggesting that all both u and v are powers of 2 but they are supposed to be relatively prime so the only way this can happen so therefore this implies that v has got to be 1 because it's the smaller guy and implying further that if v is equal to 1 from this second equation uh, u comes out as 2 to the power y divided by 2 so 2 to the power y minus 1 alright so now I can move all this to that side and we can solve these two results now um, so therefore uh, we have 3 to the power x1 is equal to u square plus 1 and uh, from the second one 5 to the z1 is equal to u square minus 1 um, so where well obviously where uh, yeah I should have replaced uh, well okay l l let's do it in two steps uh, I think uh, the second one is a better option, right? So therefore, this will be we did, we can factorize this as u minus one times u plus one. So therefore, we would get two to the power y minus one plus one times two to the power y minus one minus one. So all I did was to uh, substitute it here. 
<laughs> and finally, um, hmm, actually, uh, that doesn't look right. Oh, the parametrization is wrong. Ha 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 ha. This parametrization obviously is terribly wrong. So this one is a minus and this guy is a plus, right? Because this is the hypotenuse. That's the bigger one. Sorry for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I messed up pretty badly there. So therefore, this guy is the minus one. That one is the plus one. So this one is the minus. So therefore, I shouldn't be doing on this one. I should be doing the other one. So this one is the minus one. This one is the plus one. So therefore, I should make use of the first equation, not the second one. There you go. <coughs> so this is... <laughs> <coughs> u minus 1 and this one is uh, u plus 1 where u is okay now we can substitute so um yeah the second one this one i will use later on so 2 to the power y minus 1 minus 1 times 2 to the power y minus 1 plus 1 aha so look at that on the left hand side we have a power of 3 and on the right hand side we have two factors that differ by 2 right minus 1 plus 1 the, the first part are the same so they, these two factors they differ by 2 and there's no way that the powers of 3 differ by 2 except the, t the case where one of them is 1 the other one is 3 and indeed so therefore this guy here is a 1 the smaller one and this guy has to be a 3 and boom so therefore we have 2 to the y minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1 uh, further implying obviously from here y has got to be I think a 2 right uh, like we expected now uh, we can go back and f uh, solve it for 3 to the x1 so we have 3 to the x1 is equal to uh, u square minus 1 so obviously from here for instance uh, yeah it doesn't matter so if you plug in u equals uh, y equals 2 in our expression so we get u is equal to 2 so therefore uh, 3 to the x1 is equal to 3 further implying x1 is equal to 1 but remember early on that uh, x1 was simply uh, x was simply 2x1 so therefore suggesting that uh, further suggesting x itself is uh, 2 times 1 which is just a 2 so that's perfect x is equal to 2 and finally 5 to the power z1 is equal to u was a 2 so 2 square plus 1 which is equal to 5 further implying z1 is equal to uh, 1 and as a result z itself is 2 z1 which is equal to 2 aha and that's e exactly the answer right so therefore we have found the only solution to the to this uh, Diophantine equation and that's indeed um, <coughs> um, x equals y equals uh, 2. Now, uh, we can obviously uh, go ahead and even prove this theorem, which is actually not that bad at all. Um, if you guys have a few minutes, uh, I can. Uh, you can just keep uh, watching this video. And, um, and in the end, what I want is uh, just to show you two applications of this neat uh, theorem. So obviously, we saw one application here, but this is a very versatile uh, result that can be applied in very different situations um, so if you start with this so how come that we are supposed to have these uh, u's and v's right so let's uh, l let's prove that uh, well obviously um, they cannot uh, a and b uh, the, the legs of our right triangle are, well, kind of, <laughs> uh, well, okay, 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 so forget about the right triangle, but A and B, they cannot be uh, both uh, even, uh, because then A and B, well, obviously they cannot be, because they are relatively prime, that's silly, uh, but can they be both odd, uh, can A and B be both odd, uh, no, because if they are both odd in mode 2, uh, well, uh, I should say in mod 4. If they are both odd, uh, in mod four, 4, uh, this would be 1, this would be 1, right? Two odd numbers. So odd number square in mod 4 is 1. And this one is a 1, so 2 total. But a square is never equal to congruent to 2 in mod 4. A square is either 0 or 1, right? So therefore... Um, um, yeah, so A and B cannot be both odd, and obviously they cannot be both even because of this condition. So as a result, one of them is odd, the other one is even, and we can now understand that the fact that, so the first part of the proof is done, they have to be opposite parity, and without loss of generality, we can assume that uh, A is odd and B is even. Um, now, uh, after done uh, having done this, we can now organize our uh, the original equation, so therefore the even guy is equal to C squared minus 
minus a squared, which is just c minus a times c plus a a right well obviously b squared b itself is an even number so the left hand side is even e, both of these terms are even obviously odd minus odd odd minus odd right so obviously if one of them is odd the other one is even c has got to be odd um so uh and so both of them therefore has factors of two and obviously both of them cannot at the same time have factors of four right one of them will have a factor of four but not both of them at the same time so they both have factors of twos in them and because uh um R A and C um uh do they have to be well they have to be relatively prime because if they had a factor that would have been also a factor of b as well so therefore a and c are definitely relatively prime uh so because they are uh, relatively prime uh yes so um yeah so because a and c are relatively prime if they have any common factor c minus a and c plus a it, got, it has to be two so they have no other right so the c minus a and c plus a their only common factor is a two so both expressions have twos in them that are common and the rest is um they are different um so therefore uh, but at the same time the left hand side is a perfect square so the only explanation for that is and both of them cannot be a multiple of four only one so therefore uh, so the conclusion from here is that c minus a and c plus a they are twice a perfect square right so c minus a c plus a uh two, so two times um um well u square and v square how about that <laughs> yeah where u and v are positive integers and and that's it and from this if you add these two equations you would get 2c is equal to 2 times u square plus v square so therefore c is equal to u square plus v square if you take the difference of the two you'll get u square minus v square well obviously uh um uh huh again i messed up why do i keep messing it up the sum so because i have i want to prove this one so let's call this guy as v and this one is a u there you go so therefore yeah subtracting uh this one from the first one from the second one yes this one is good awesome so this is c this is a and obviously now we can find the, the value of b all you do is you just substitute these two expressions into here and here and from there we would get also that b is equal to two times uv Whew. okay so we have found the desired uh, um what do you call it a uh, parameterization well, one one more thing to do would be to uh well uh, is it also a necessary condition so therefore what you can do is you can plug in these values 2uv u square plus v square and u square minus v square into the original equation just to check if they work or not and finally scaling is possible uh so the, uh, this gives rise abc the triple that you find we decided to call them uh, a primitive uh, is a primitive uh, Pythagorean triple Pythagorean triple oh come on okay uh, this is a primitive Pythagorean so the word primitive is the fact that ABC they don't share a common factor but indeed they can share a common factor and still satisfy this so therefore once you have a primitive uh, um, Pythagorean triple you can easily um, huh? so for instance um, here you can just factor it right so because you have a homogeneous equation in the beginning so k times uh, u square minus v square b is equal to k times 2 uv and finally c is equal to k times u square plus v square there you go awesome so um one last thing before I finish. Uh, well, this video has been <laughs> pretty long already. Um, one last thing is, uh, let, let's do a couple of uh, applications of this. One of the cool applications uh, is uh, is the following. A very nice result. Uh, indeed, uh, you can actually uh, find a rational, appro uh, rational approximation for square root of 2 uh, using these primitive Pythagorean triples. So why would that be? Okay, so uh, for, in order for us to see that, make that observation, let's go ahead. Once we have this U and V, let's let's see how this mechanism works. This U V mechanism. So therefore, uh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to create a chart U V, and based on the values of U and V, we'll calculate A, B, and C. Remember, A uh, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So 
a, a is u square minus v square, b is 2uv, and finally c is uh, u square plus v square. Okay, so u is strictly, so what are the conditions governing u and v? Okay, so let's do it here. Uh, all right, so I'll just create a few of these Pythagorean triples, and then from there I, I would like to make a couple of observations, and we'll call it a day afterwards. Um, well, uh, u is greater than v, u and v are relatively prime, and finally u and v have opposite parity. All right, so therefore we can start with what well, the lowest that you can get would be a 2 as a result V can be a 1 so they are relatively prime and they have opposite parity so then the value of uh, a would be 2 square minus 1 square so that's a 3 uh, 2 times 2 times 1 uh, that's a 4 and finally 2 square plus 1 square that's a 5 okay so that's our answer right so where u is equal to 2 V is equal to 1 remember early on when we solved the question I think we found it somewhere yes V came out as a 1 and when we found y is equal to 2, we substituted it here and then 2 minus 1. That thing came out as a 2. u came out as a 2. Okay, good, good. Uh, let's move on. What is the next one? Well, uh, u cannot be 2 anymore. So u has got to be a 3. v can be a 1 or u is a 2. Oh, no, 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 no. It can't be a 1. It has to be a 2. Why? Because of this uh, set third condition u and v has got to have opposite parity remember u is greater than v u v uh, are relatively prime and u and v have opposite parity so u is equal to 3 uh, 9 minus 4 is a 5 uh, 2 times 3 6 times uh, 2 is uh, 12 and then 9 plus 4 is uh, 13 that's pretty neat uh, next one would be a 4 if u is a 4 v can be either a 1 or a 3, they have to be relatively prime and odd, right? Or you can have u is equal to 5, uh, v can be either, it can't be a 1, it can be a 2, opposite parity, or it can be a 4, right? And so on. For each of these values, you can create, keep creating uh, the table and find uh, different uh, primitive uh, uh, Pythagorean triples. Obviously, 3, 4, 5 triangle, 5, 12, 13 triangle, we know that. When you plug in 4, 16 minus 1 is a 15, uh, 2 times 4 is 8 and finally uh, 16 plus 1 is 17. 15, 8, 17 is another uh, well-known uh, Pythagorean triple. If you plug in 4 and 3, uh, 4 square is uh, 16 minus 9 is a 7. 2 times 4 is 8 times 3 is 24. And finally 16 plus 9 is 25 and indeed uh, 7 24 25 is yet another uh, Pythagorean triple uh, le le let me go one more and then uh, I'll stop here so if you plug in 5 and 2 so 25 minus so this one is a 21 uh, 10 uh, 20 21 20 and uh, finally uh, 25 plus 4 is 29 okay so remember my question and my question is, indeed, uh, the, the, these Pythagorean triples and this parametrization is amazing. It does a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, miracles. <laughs> um, so one of the things that uh, I don't know if you can uh, observe it at this moment, but it is the fact that you can always find uh, Pythagorean triples such that uh, the uh, legs of your right triangle oh gosh what did I do here okay look at that 3 4 5 triangle a 21 20 29 a triangle do you see how the two legs of your right triangle are just one apart from each other what would be the implication if there is infinitely many of such uh, legs wouldn't it like wouldn't they become more and more uh, isosceles looking right triangles and as a result, wouldn't it uh, approximate the, um, uh, the uh, square root 2, right? So because you are, you are getting closer and closer to this right triangle, that would be amazing. So but then, do we have infinitely many? Uh, yeah, there is actually infinitely many. Uh, and uh, for instance, you need to go down uh, quite a, uh, a few more rows down the road. So let's go put three dots to eventually find when u and v are uh, 12 and 5 
Now let's see if you can figure what's going on. Uh, then in that case, uh, the Pythagorean triple, I believe, will become 119. So 12 squared is 144 minus 25 is 119. This one becomes 120. Obviously, they are one apart from each other. And this one is 169. 144 plus 25 is 169. And look at that beauty. Uh, another Pythagorean triple where the two legs of your right triangle are just one apart from each other. So indeed, if you have you have infinitely many such Pythagorean triples, that can already uh, guide us in terms of uh, approximating uh, square root of two, right? So for instance, one approximation would be you can just focus on one of the legs. So for instance, you can look at the ratio A to C. Uh, sorry, sorry, I mean to say uh, the 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 the. the the hypotenuse to, the, to one of the legs, uh, 5 to 3, or 5 to 4, right? So, uh, root 2 will be between those two, right? So, 5 over 3, and between 5, over, well, 5 over 4 is the smaller one, <laughs> 5 over 3. Uh, obviously, this approximation is not pretty good at this moment, so this one is 1.25, sorry for that, 1.25, and this one is 1.67. But in the next row, it becomes better. So root 2 would be uh, squeezed between uh, 29 over uh, 21 and 29 over 20. And so on, right? So uh, obviously you can use a calculator to, to, and you will see that this approximation is much better. And in by this step, by the third line, it would be really good. I, I Trust me. So by now it would be 119. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, 169 over 120 and this one is 169 oh gosh over oh my goodness over 119 and then um and then boom um one thing uh, if you want uh, that uh, you can do if you don't want to keep like uh, I, I think this is neat yeah yeah so that, that's pretty good so if you want let's quick i think i should have my calculator ready so let, let me quickly show you a square root of two so two when you take the square root is uh equal to let me make note of this 1.41421356 uh and well uh so Let's see how well this would approximate. So this guy in the middle is 1.41421356. Uh, oh, come on. 5.6. Okay, okay. So let's just say 1.35. Da, da, da. All right. So let's have a look at these two monsters. 169 over 120 and 169 over 119. 169 over 119. So 169 over 120. 169 divided by 120. Uh, that one would be that's pretty neat. One four one. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What am I doing? I'm looking looking at the wrong line. So one four zero uh, eight three three three. Uh, uh, versus the other one is one sixty nine uh, divided by one nineteen. It was I think right. Oops. What am I doing? One sixty nine divided by one nineteen. That one is one forty two. 1.420168 okay so moving to the other page uh so therefore this guy the lower bound came out as 140 uh 833 versus this guy is 1.40 the, the upper bound uh 142 uh 0168 so therefore yeah i i think you can you can see how we are able to approximate well uh, another smooth way to approximate it if you don't like these boundaries you can just take the average of these two and divide it by the average basically so basically we can approximate root 2 uh, progressively by uh, the following sequence okay so let's create the sequence so uh, three and a half so the, uh, the average of three and four would be 3.5 uh, well oops so let's write it as five divided by 3.5 and then you will get closer and closer the next term uh, would be uh, 29 over 20.5, 29 divided by 20.5, and then the next one would be 169 over 119.5, and indeed this would be a rather good, uh, well, yeah, that, that would nail it basically, so for instance 169 over 1195, uh, let me quickly show you, 169 divided by 119.5 equals Hey, you, look at that. So this guy is amazing. Look at that number. So we have 1.414225. 1.414225. Uh, 
so this guy is 1.414225 and compare it with this guy 4142 the first four decimal after uh, decimal place that the, the uh, uh, are the same and then you have a 25 here versus a 13 here so pretty good all right so finally uh, we still have to prove one more thing how do we know that you will always get uh like this approximation in the infinitely many uh primitive pythagorean triples which are which have legs which are one apart from each other a and b they have a difference of one so if you will let's write that so the difference between a and b remember a square plus b square in an equation a square plus b square is equal to c square so we want to prove that uh we we have infinitely many a uh, infinitely often infinitely many infinitely many uh so well how do you prove that uh well there is a very uh troll way <laughs> uh, to prove it um um yeah so all we will do is uh, just to replace the parameterization with a and b so remember that a can be parameterized as u square minus v square and b as 2uv if you plug them in that would give us and now if we get rid of the absolute value uh, so we would get a square u square minus v square minus 2uv is equal to plus or minus one and uh now here uh, we can uh we can make this uh, really nice uh, observation so uh we can um rewrite this in the, in the following way um um hmm. yes so what i will do is u square minus 2 uv and then we have minus so i'll do it plus v square minus 2 v square equals plus or minus one and that's just u minus v square minus 2v square is equal to plus or minus 1. And at this stage, if you want, you can e e even further do uh, a substitution. For instance, u minus v, I can call it as an x. And uh, v itself, we can call it as a y. Okay, so that's creepy. So therefore, our expression is x square minus 2y square is equal to plus or minus 1 for those of you who have some training in <laughs> advanced number theory so you have a pal equation uh, so obviously we don't want to go into this but i'll just tell you that you could have seen uh you could have made a critical observation here what can you say about the values of u and v here you guys see that this is not a coincidence the when they are one apart from each other the values of u and v do you guys see that um so how is u and v uh progressing here uh well yeah so uh that, that that's uh, that's a pretty neat result so um um so you do you guys see that so um so whatever is the value of u in the previous round in the next round this becomes the value for v and again u previous round next round becomes the value of uh, value of uh, v and for um yeah so we can even speculate on um yeah we can uh, we can do quite a few things here let me go ahead and uh, share with you the the parameterization that works that solves this thing uh, recursively in a sense we can get this uh, recursive sequence as follows so we can uh, the, the 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 infinite sequence that works for this equation is the following uh, x sub n plus 1 is equal to uh, x sub n plus 2 y sub n aha uh -huh. and um, and y sub n plus 1 is equal to um, uh, x sub n plus y sub n. And obviously we have already an initial condition where x1 and y1 is uh, x0 and y0 are 1. Where uh, with, let's say with uh, x0, uh, oops, x0, y0 equals uh, 1, 1. Okay, so we, we can obviously now you can plug them in. You have your initial uh, equations. Okay, there we go. Um, so for instance, and look at the way we defined x and y, right? So x is equal to u minus v and y is equal to v. So therefore, uh, at in the beginning, uh, the values for u and v would be, well, uh, 
v is obviously equal to 1, right? And then v, uh, u is equal to, uh, because x is 1, uh, v, u is equal to 2. And indeed, that's one of the solution. solutions. u is equal to 2, v is equal to 1. But then if you keep uh, applying this uh, recursive form, so in the next level, so if you start with x0, y0, 1, 1, uh, 1 plus 2 is 3 here. So x, x1, y1 would be uh, 3, 2. So if x1 is 3 and y1 is 2, 3, 2 we said, right? So therefore, uh, okay, let's just write it. So 3 is equal to u minus v and 2 is equal to v only. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, v is 2 and u is, from this equation we see it is a 5. And so on. So t v is equal to 2, u is equal to 5, boom, you have this one. And then you can keep going on and on with this uh, very neat uh, recursive form. And that's it. Um, you have infinitely many Pythagorean triples which are one unit apart from each other. And now, <laughs> uh, just for the fun of it, you can, uh, you, you can even obtain some very neat... Uh, uh, geometric properties of this. So, for instance, one of the things that uh, you can think of, I can think of, uh, is uh, this very uh, well-known problem. And obviously, there are many solutions to that problem. But one solution in this context is very neat. So, the problem uh, is to find an infinite set of points, coplanar points, not all on the on the same uh, straight line, such that the distance between any pair of points is always rational. So in the space, okay, so let's write that down. So in the space, you will end up having some uh, points. Can you have infinitely many points, not all collinear, right? Um, such that, um, what happens? Uh, we want to make sure that the distance between any two is always irrational. How can you guarantee that, right? Uh, and these points are obviously all coplanar. Um, well, the, the neat result is this one, right? So the one that we did. So because we know that, uh, um, uh, huh. no, actually, uh, wait, what was the construction of this one? There was a very neat construction. Hold on. Or maybe I'll leave it to you guys as an exercise. Haha, <laughs> that would be horrible. Okay, okay, so let's think about it. Uh, so we have the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, obviously one of the points will be in the origin without loss of generality. And we'll put another point here on 1, 0, 0, 1, I should say. <coughs> so if I have this rational point here, um, okay, well, hold on. So a square plus b square is equal to c square. Ah, 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 divide both sides by b square, so this would imply a over b, aha, yes, 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 plus 1, uh, or 1 square, is equal to c over b square. So, therefore, uh, one of the sides is 1, and a over b is a rational number, so this number here is a over b, and as a result, uh, the, the hypotenuse here is c over b, which is also rational because a, b, c are integers. And obviously, you can keep uh, selecting as many rational points along this line. Yeah, all of them will give you this nice result where as long as this guy uh, is rational, uh, this one w is guaranteed to be rational because you have uh, infinitely many which satisfy... Uh, this parametrization, yeah. Um, let me see what other interesting... Obviously, the, this is not unique. Uh, you can find quite a few uh, different ways to come up with these points. For instance, try to find on the unit circle uh, points. Just arrange infinitely many points on the unit circle such that the distances between uh, any two is always uh, is always rational. Okay, so this been this has been already a pretty long uh, video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. So the main question is solved. So we've made uh, you can use purely a number theoretic results, or in this case we we kind of flavored it with some um, uh, some geometry as well. All right, looking forward to see you guys in our uh, in the new year.